Greetings one and all, this is Rhythm Words and welcome to my channel. Now I've decided to take a break, a little break from Battlefield 1 because I know what I'm going to get with Battlefield anyway and um, just wanted to take some time out to play another game from a franchise that is dearly beloved amongst us PlayStation fans and that is Rise of the Tomb Raider as you can see. Now um, some pieces of irony here because being an exclusive, PlayStation exclusive, Rise of the Tomb Raider was made an exclusive for the Xbox One for a year, which I found very, very strange. But then these are the times we're basically living in right about now. Do you know what I mean? It's like the market shares basically gonna be shared out to all consoles soon enough. Do you know what I'm saying? So the console war is a lot of bullshit to begin with anyway. As long as, long as you're gaming, gaming wins at the end of the day. But anyway, I digress. With Rise of the Tomb Raider now being released on the PS4, I was kind of wondering whether to get into it or not. Um, the last experience of basically playing Tomb Raider as the reboot was kind of mixed. It was okay, but it was kind of mixed for me. But there were so many good reviews about it. So many good reviews. And the mention of the DLC, the paid DLC, being made for free and actually more extras in it as well. Um, in terms of VR compatibility and also, also something that Naughty Dog and Uncharted 4 neglected from the day one release of Uncharted 4 till now was co-op, which they've included in this game um, under the banner of Endurance. So that just, you know, that reeled me in. And then when I actually got into the game, I just found it to be one of the most exquisitely gorgeous looking games I've played for a long time you know forget the 4k forget all of that the raw bones beer bones vanilla game just the look of the game was just absolutely amazing i've actually gone 47 percent of the game the story mode the campaign and i'm really 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 enjoying it so if like me you was on the fence in relation to tomb raider within the past five ten years I'd advise you to get this game. Do you know what I mean? If you want a real good, nice, chill out game um, with a co-op mode for good measure, I'd recommend this game. I really slated the multiplayer on the original Tomb Raider reboot because the guns just sounded shit. It just sounded shit. Now, there's been slight improvements um, with the, sh the mechanics of the weapons and what have you. But one thing I do give Uncharted over Tomb Raider is the simple fact of the controls being a lot more fluid with Uncharted. Although people love to use blind firing more so in Uncharted, I don't really like to use blind firing, but if I have to, I have to. But with Rise of the Tomb Raider, it's a more solitary experience for the most part. So that doesn't even need to be even involved in the whole mechanics of the game. But I'm really, really, really enjoying this game a lot. So it comes highly recommended. Now, the second part of my leisure time being spent of late has been watching a lot of YouTube videos about two subjects in particular. The first being Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, the love and the hate of it, and the PlayStation 4 Pro. Now, first of all, with COD, I've been watching a lot of videos in relation to this subject, and I've made sure that I watched a balanced amount of videos in terms of the love of it, the hate of it, and the indifference of it in general. This is what it boils down to. If you like something and it's gonna cost a lot of money to basically get and you haven't killed anybody, you haven't kidnapped anybody, you haven't really sold drugs to any vulnerable people to get the money, you know, you haven't robbed anybody to get the money. If you haven't done any of those things, buy it. Do you know what I'm saying? It's your money. I and nobody else has the right to tell you what to do with your money, however, when you put common sense and logic into the equation, you have to understand what other people are taking from the whole situation. It is clear to see that Activision did not, or Infinity Ward rather, did not feel comfortable with just selling Call of Duty Infinite Warfare by itself because it was something that a lot of COD players were getting mightily royally pissed off with the wall running boost jumping exosuit all of that bullshit 
it has been running for like three years now and people's getting tired of it you know in comparison to battlefield one it's like a cartoon nowadays do you know what i'm saying and a lot of people are migrating from cod infinite warfare to battlefield one for that very reason and them being hardcore call of duty fans to the point where some youtubers are not really feeling it but still squeezing out of their ass their love for the game quote unquote i guess do you know what i mean because they're getting paid you know and to me that's not it's not righteous but they're not killing anybody do you know what i mean and in this current climate of skullduggery and skullfuckery i suppose it's minor so it doesn't really matter at the end of the day now just getting a little bit deeper slightly deeper into the whole cod 4 remastered thing now whether you bought infinite warfare for that whether you bought it for the two games whether you are not buying it it's it's irrelevant because for some people they're gonna wait until that game comes out separately to buy it anyway but even with all those parameters in place it's it's irrelevant to me because if you're a new person that's actually coming into the whole cod thing like me i've been a relative noob in the whole cod franchise and if you're basically going into cod 4 playing it how you would normally play let's say black ops 3 or even ghost dare i say it is given that you're going to have a rough time with it because a lot of cod veterans knows all the spots knows all the grenade spots where to throw the grenades and where to have the cars explode right next to you and all of that bollocks do you know what i mean so you're gonna have a hard time basically playing it but the advice that some people give is to actually stick with it but then with me sticking with an eight-year-old game when i'm basically playing on a basically new system right it's not gonna hold my interest for long you know experience is going to tell me well going into cod 4 with a romanticized idea of how the game is going to play it's going to inherit the same problems that you had in the beginning but for those who are hardcore cod fans they're going to stick with it and they're going to play it in the same way but then if it's available on the playstation 3 yeah, you can say, well, the graphics are better and what have you, but still the same problem's going to exist, whether you play it on PlayStation 3 or PlayStation 4 or PlayStation Pro. But it comes back to the original point I, I made. If you like something and you have the money to buy it, then buy it. You know, I have no right to call anybody a jackass or an idiot, as some YouTubers do, in people basically wanting to buy it yes they can be hypocritical in saying well i ain't buying i don't support infinity ward but i'm gonna buy infinite warfare for cod 4 i understand that level of hypocrisy but at the end of the day it's their money they're not hurting nobody they're just basically exposing themselves you know what i mean you have no control over what they earn how much they earn and what they spend their money on i mean for me vr is a big thing for me and amongst my PSN brethren, they're not convinced one way or the other, but they're not disrespecting me for the fact that I've bought a PSVR for nearly 350 quid. I mean, in total, I've nearly, I've nearly spent two grand within the last three months on a 4K TV, a PS4 Pro, uh, PSVR, uh platinum sony platinum wireless headset and that's basically just bumped it to two grand already now whether other people who see that can afford it or not and think it's worth the money for me to get at this point that's down to them but it's my money you know and if people want to pay 80 pound or 60 pound for an eight-year-old game then so be it you know what i mean so freaking be it simple as now it's kind of leading on to my next um, item, which is the PS4 Pro. I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos on that, you know, looking for, pardon the pun, the pros and the cons of the whole thing. And for me, it was a no brainer. It was a no brainer. At first it was like, well, I don't have a 4K TV to play it on. So I'm not really gonna notice the difference at the end of the day. So I'm gonna use my PS4, but then, getting into more research of the whole thing, I've begun to realize that this motherfucker right here, the PS4 Pro is gonna run 
with more power, more processing power than the PS4, the bog standard. And from a lot of accounts that I've been getting, that people who were fortunate enough to have had a hands-on experience with the PlayStation 4 Pro, and we're not talking about people that's been sponsored by Sony whatsoever, they felt a way coming back to their PS4. It was like looking at a PS3 from a PS4 to them. Do you know what I mean? You know, now with the availability of funds to buy a 4K TV, I understand that. I totally understand that. But I do think that it is worth the investment, you know, even if it's just to get a PS4 Pro, it's worth the investment to future proof with other games. Now, the game situation, yeah, they can say, well, you know, such and such supports PS4 Pro, yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. But it doesn't make sense me playing a shit ass game in 4K because it's still a shit ass game. If the game is really great, you know, playing it on 4K is going to be absolutely amazing, you know. And even with me playing Destiny and Battlefield 1, right, even before the patches came in for the PS4 Pro and HDR, it's, a, it's amazing to look at. Absolutely amazing to look at. So I'm just being prepared for some of the games that I'm definitely gonna buy and experience through 4K and HDR. I've got my surround sound system, you know, to get me through the whole thing because the speakers on HDR TVs or eight or 4K TVs are very crap to begin with. So you're gonna have to play it through your headset or your surround sound system if you have one. I mean, even your basic bug standard stereo headphones that you plug into your PSVR headset is gonna enable 3D surround sound. So any which way but loose, as things progress, as technology progress, you're gonna have to pay into it to, it to get the full experience of immersive gaming. And that's what it's gonna be all about from 2017 onwards. Well, that's my story and I'm fucking sticking to it. Now, in summary, Infinite Warfare, COD 4, 4K TVs, PS4 Pros, PSVRs, any game that other people wouldn't be seen dead playing. If you have the money to basically buy it, then buy it. Life's too short, man. Anyway, listen, I'm out. And as always, thanks for watching. Whatever the platform, media, format, genre, happy gaming. That's what it's about, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, brothers and sisters. And until I catch you on the next one, please stay blessed. Megan. <laughs>